Hey everyone, Adam Shaw here from Bravura Media Company. Today we have another vintage map for you guys. It is a map of Dublin, Ireland that was originally produced in 1836. We're doing a video on this map because it's in connection with a series we're doing on our channel, Irish History in Tribute uh, to the upcoming St. Patrick's Day holiday. Uh, so we're going to be doing other map videos. Uh, Boston, we did a Boston map. We, we're going to be doing Irish, Ireland maps. We're going to be doing a, a United States Irish immigration map. We're even going to be doing a beer drinking uh, video. We're going to be testing out different beers on St. Patrick's Day. So, I mean, we like to have a lot of fun. We like to talk about history. We like to look at maps, and we like to drink some beer. So definitely subscribe to our channel. Uh, we upload very, very often, and we just like to have fun. So uh, without further ado, we're going to dive into this map and the different elements that are within this map, but we're going to give also a brief history of Dublin, Ireland. Uh, to start, Dublin was originally founded as a Viking settlement in the 10th century, uh, largely because it, it was kind of the center hub of a great Norman invasion in Ireland. Uh, Dublin, the word comes from uh, the Gaelic word Dublin, uh, D-U-B-L-I-N-N, -N, uh, referring to a black dark pool, also known uh, as many in the area, a dark tidal pool that was kind of linked to the River Leafy. And um, we're going to actually go into the into this dark tidal pool because it's actually located behind uh, Dublin Castle in in the uh, the rear section. Uh, we're going to go more in depth into that on the map. Um, but moving on, uh, uh, Dublin, uh, despite a number of native Irish uprisings, uh, remained in Viking control for a good amount of time up until 1169, for which uh, Rivade Riva uh, Con Concobar of Connac uh, actually took Dublin away and was declared King of Ireland. So he was a Gaelic king. Uh, then some time later, after the first Lord Mayor of Dublin's appointment in 1229, the city's population started to grow to about 8,000 people uh, by the end of the 13th century. Uh, Dublin in this time really, really prospered well. Uh, because it became a trade hub. Uh, even, it, you know, this was even during a time where Robert I uh, of Scotland tried to capture the city in 1317. The city, the city still prospered economically even during that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. The population uh, eventually reached to 21,000 uh, by 1640. Uh, but soon after 1640, a plague uh, which happened from 1649 to 51, uh, would ravage and take about half the population. So they, they grew to about 21,000, then the plague hit, and boom, I mean, back down to 10. Uh, so pretty devastating. The city, though, would resurge back up to 50,000 uh, uh, people due to uh, the proper, prosperous wool and linen trade. So economically, I mean, they were located on the coast, a very, very unique location. Uh, very conducive to trade. Uh, by the 18th century, Dublin became the second largest city of the British uh, Empire and the fifth largest in Europe. Uh, Dublin grew exponentially during the 18th century with the construction of many new districts and buildings such as Marion Square, Par uh, Parliament House, and the Royal Exchange. Uh, in 1759, the, the founding of the Guinness Brewery contributed to immense economic growth. We all love beer. The brewery since then it, it has really contributed to uh, a large cohort of the economic, uh, uh, I guess you could say, prosperity that has happened up to this day. So, I mean, really, the, the economic prosperity that's happened since 1759 is you know, gone on because of that brewery. So I thought that was kind of cool too. We mentioned that. Um, so just a few uh, historical facts uh, uh, I found interesting about the city uh, of Dublin. 
let's dive in. We're, let's zoom in and kind of explore and examine this map. We talked about that castle, Dublin Castle, and we talked about the garden. So apparently, from what I read through my research, there was a dark tidal pool. We can see how close the castle is to to the uh, Lifey. Uh, God, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Lifey River. It's pretty dang close. So there was. They're saying behind the garden to the rear of the castle that there is a dark tidal pool. So there must have been a waterway uh, right to to the back of right here. So, but I love this map. I mean, so many locations are labeled. We've got Trinity College uh, drawn right here. And we got we get all the street names uh, that are strewn across Dame Street. We even got Castle Market right towards the rear of the castle, the garden right over there. We've got a lot of churches labeled. I noticed that. I noticed a lot of hospitals labeled as well. Here's another market, Ormond Market on the other side of the Lifey. Uh, here's a post office here. I saw Richmond penitentiary towards the outskirts of the city. I thought that was pretty cool that that was labeled Rutland square is not named Rutland square. I did a uh, search online for Rutland square and it was, I think it was rotunda rotunda square is what they're calling it now. Um, and here's a uh, Royal square. We can see lots of different areas labeled. Let me see if I can. An artillery barracks. This is pretty cool. So I do a lot of metal detecting videos. Uh, in other videos, if you went around the Lifey River towards this section, very close to I guess Bell Lane. Uh, what is this? Killam, Kilmanheim Lane, and you went. A little bit towards the Lifey River. I mean, if you take a metal detector around this area, you're gonna find something. I'm sure of it. Um, so that, I thought that was kind of cool that our artillery barracks is located right there. There's a burial ground very close to the St. John's Well. We've got a jail. I don't know if I can zoom in. Here's a jail over to that end. Um, city basins. I mean, it's just amazing how much information is just crammed into it. St. Patrick's Cathedral, we're talking about the good old St. Patrick. Here's his cathedral right here. And I thought this was cool. Just another cool element that they had on this map that you haven't seen yet. See, remember we talked about hospitals? I told you there was a lot of hospitals on this map. Here's one of the hospitals uh, right over here. Look at the illustrations. We get a ground level. This is an 1836 map, yet they give us a ground view of the illustrations of the various buildings. Isn't this, uh, this is wonderful, wonderful. Bank of Ireland, that's what it looked like. We got the Custom House, the Royal Exchange. Remember we talked about one of the buildings that really, really got the trade, trade was going, and, and we were talking about the Royal Exchange really had a large economic impact on the growth of Dublin. St. Patrick's the Church. I love these maps. God, I love these maps. Here's another penitentiary. You're noticing that they're putting the penitentiaries on the outskirts of the city. They're not putting them anywhere near the middle of the city. So here's another hospital. Sir Patrick Dunn's Hospital. So pretty cool. Just a really amazing. Oh, look, a, a railroad. We've got a railroad right here. See this? Kingstown Railroad. That's so cool. I, I haven't noticed that before. You are, When you look at these maps, I mean, there's just so much information on here that you miss little things. And you just, it's like discovering, it's like discovery or just, just finding new things. I, I really do like that a lot. So, pretty cool map that we have. I mean... I, I'm just always blown away by this. Here, remember we talked about the prisons on the outskirts again. So it's pretty cool. Here's a female orphan house. There's a female orphan house on Circular Road on the outskirts of Dublin. Oh, look at this. A Dublin female penitentiary on Florinda pl Place. You know, I'm going to probably, if you stick with me, subscribe to our channel because, you know, I'm going to 
you know what? We're actually going to look into the history of these buildings on, on these various streets. Definitely give us a subscribe. Uh, because I'm going to go more depth into this, I think. Uh, there's just so much information on it. I could go on. Here's another castle. Apparently there was another castle on Sheriff Street. Uh, there's a bathhouse on Street Mayor Street. Here's a lighthouse. So we, we got the ocean right here. Bottle works. Very close to the ocean. Obviously they had to use sand to make the bottles. They had to heat sand up and make these bottles. Look how close it was to the ocean. God, this is just... This is amazing. There's a lighthouse right here. Yeah, definitely subscribe to us. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I mean, I, I could go on and on about the various locations. And uh, we will. We're probably going to do another video uh, based on specifics of the buildings. So definitely subscribe to us. Uh, and like this video, share this video if, if you found this video informative and, and, uh, you really like this, definitely give us a subscription. Uh, also, uh, check out some of, uh, our other, uh, St. Patrick's Day series themed videos on history. Uh, we're going to be uploading several videos throughout this week. Uh, stay tuned for the beer, the beer tasting video and, and I will see you guys soon. Everyone take care. All right. Bye now.